A new data from CoreLogic showing house prices have risen for a 14th straight month. For more on this story, I'm joined in the studio by Eliza Owen, who is Head of Research at CoreLogic. Uh, good morning, Eliza. Thanks for joining us. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Now, what do the numbers uh, tell us overall? Because we know the monthly snapshot differs quite uh, quite, a, quite a bit to the year to date. Over the past month, we've seen a 0.6% increase, which doesn't sound like a lot, but we're talking about another 1.6% rise in home values over the quarter, and that's the equivalent of another $12,000 on the median dwelling value. Mm. This is also the fifth consecutive month that housing values have hit a fresh record high, despite the challenge of high interest rates, low consumer sentiment and weaker economic conditions. Yeah. Uh, does it paint a, a consistent picture across the country or is it patchy, quite different between states and territories? Yeah, this is a great point. So I think a lot of the increase that we're seeing at the national level is at the end of the day being driven by more affordable segments of the market because that's what the high interest rates are doing. They're driving demand to price points that are lower and make more sense for servicing a mortgage. So you can see that in different percentiles of the market. The top 25% of values uh, has only risen 0.7% in the past quarter. In the bottom 25% of the market, we've seen about a 3% rise. And you could also see it in the capital cities where uh, more expensive capital cities like Sydney and Melbourne haven't moved much at all. But on the other end of the spectrum, Perth was up 1.9% in the month alone and it's up nearly 20% over the past year. Mm. What about the, um, the, the sea changes and tree changes? What are the regions doing? What is the stats telling you about what is happening in those areas? So overall, the regions were up about 1.6% in the quarter as well, but it's a little more diverse when you look at the different rest of state areas. So in regional Victoria, for example, we're still seeing mild declines, but again, in WA, rest of WA, we're seeing increases of 2% in the month. That reflects different dynamics in the states and territories, things like differences in interstate population. Mm. New South Wales and Victoria have been losing people, whereas in WA, the quarterly result for September last year was an addition of about 2,200 people in the September quarter. That's against a decade average of minus 95 people per quarter. Yeah, yeah. Immigration plays a huge part, and I'll ask you about that in, in just a moment as well. Um, do, do your da does your data uh, give you any idea about who is buying? We can see a little bit of that from Australian Bureau of Statistics data. And what that suggests is that lending has grown most strongly in the investor segment of the market. Uh, lending to investors was up about 18.5% in the past 12 months. And that makes sense if you think about rising housing values, which is attractive to investors, uh, rising rents, which are rising even faster than the actual housing value and creating stronger rent yields, um, and also the fact that the expectation for interest rates is that they would move lower towards the end of this year. So investors might be trying to get ahead of that and, and behaving a bit opportunistic in that sense. And we know what um, a greater number of investors mean in the market for people A, trying to get in and B, rents. You mentioned that there. What does the data tell you about what's going on in the rental market? Well, despite the strength in investment lending, rents are still going up and they're going up more strongly through the start of the year than what we saw at the end of last year. Uh, so rent values have risen 2.8% nationally in the quarter, and that's the highest quarterly growth rate we've seen since May 2022. So what that tells us is, is a theme that I think has really emerged post-COVID over the past few years, is that our current rental system is just not enough to accommodate current levels of demand. Mm -hmm. um, a couple more questions. Uh, why, you know, why, why, I know your data doesn't necessarily drill into exactly why this is all happening, but you'd have some idea being able to extrapolate. Um, what, what, why do you think the house prices are still going up, even though we've had record high interest rates, we've had record high inflation? So on the demand side, you've got very strong net overseas migration levels. And as we discussed, for some states and territories, the interstate migration position is very strong mm. as well. Um, net overseas migration obviously running at these record highs of about 550,000 people in the year to September. 
Uh, also on the demand side, there's again the expectation of a reduced interest rate towards the end of the year. So some people might be trying to get in ahead of that. And also just domestically, new household formation. Uh, the millennial generation, for example, are at that age where they're having children, looking to get a standalone house. Mm. And then on the supply side, we've got this absolute chokehold on the construction industry. High interest rates are deterring new developments, uh, higher construction costs, tight labour market, and a lot more delinquencies in the construction space as well. So you could say it's just that old adage of supply and demand, but to quite extreme levels. Mm. So with that in mind, uh, what is the forecast saying about where house prices are going? The expectation is that they will continue to rise in 2024. At the moment, the median an outlook from the four major banks for the combined capital city market is an increase of about five and a half percent. This year has actually started off stronger than we expected, so we'll we'll see if the for, if the forecast is maybe underestimating growth a little for 2024. Eliza Owen, great to speak with you. Thank you very much. Thank you.